What's up everybody and today I'm checking out this video that was sent to me that really caught my eye. It was only sent to me a couple of times but I've been looking at the title of it and it's really confusing me. It's called a Chinese fighter jet tries to land on a US aircraft carrier then this happened. This is by Navy Productions. Obviously if you want to watch the video without me waffling over the top I'll leave a link down below in the description like I always do. I don't know whether this is legit. I don't know what's going on here. Um, it's a very strange situation, this. Um, so, yeah, let's watch it. Let's break it down. Obviously, I was on a ship when I was in the Royal Marines Commandos doing anti-piracy. And although I wasn't on an aircraft carrier, I do have a little bit of an understanding about the security of a ship. Um, so I can lend some of my expertise in that area to watch this video, break it down, and figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, again, I'll leave a link down below to the original video if you want to go and watch that. Don't think I've got anything to announce just yet. There's some really cool announcements coming up very soon uh, that you're going to be very, very excited for. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Anyway, let's shut up. Let's pull this up and let's see what the hell's going on here. A Chinese fighter jet is attempting something unbelievable. Landing on the deck of a U.S. aircraft carrier. The crew scrambles, alarms blare, and the world holds its breath. Is this fake? Given the current tensions between the U.S. and China, this is not inconceivable. It could also be a tactic by China. Yeah. But what would happen in such a situation? How would the U.S. respond? And what would be the far-reaching consequences of such a brazen act? So it didn't actually happen. This is more of a what would happen if it did. While the idea of a Chinese jet fighter attempting to land on a U.S. aircraft carrier may seem far-fetched, it's not entirely impossible. Okay. Such an action could be motivated by various factors, including a pilot's desire to defect, a True. navigational error, or even a deliberate provocation aimed at testing U.S. resolve and response capabilities. Yeah. In the event of an unauthorized landing attempt, the U.S. aircraft carrier crew would immediately spring into action. What, would, what do I think would happen in this situation? What do I think would happen? I think the U.S. would either deny them. Act well, no, they wouldn't deny him because they could be trying to defect. I think there would certainly be a lot of panic and there would be a lot of guns pointing at the ship just in case, wouldn't there? Um, I don't know whether they'd let it because what happens if there was explosives on that aircraft and it was more like a an unfortunate bomb kind of trick, you know? Um, yeah, that would be a weird one, wouldn't it? The ship's air traffic controllers would try to communicate with the approaching aircraft, demanding that it identify itself and state its intentions. Yeah. If the aircraft fails to respond or continues on its course, the carrier's combat air patrol consisting of armed fighter jets would be scrambled to intercept and escort the intruder away from the ship. Yeah, it would. Simultaneously, the carrier's command center would initiate emergency protocols, alerting nearby U.S. naval assets and shore-based command centers the unfolding situation the be US so weird would likely attempt to establish communication with chinese authorities to clarify the situation and prevent any misunderstandings that could lead to an escalation of tensions the united states boasts an impressive fleet of aircraft that's the thing aircraft carriers in the u.s don't usually sail alone there's usually other ships in the area i feel like all guns would be pointing at it like there would be a it would be a suicide mission by the chinese person by by all means um because if it did if they were tricking if there was any sort of um second kind of um plan then they would just get killed i think the only time they would allow them and they wouldn't be detained would be if it was a defect like someone who wanted to leave china and come to america Carriers each a floating city of immense power and strategic importance. Yeah. The crew, numbering in the thousands, is highly trained and prepared to respond to any threat, whether it comes from the air, sea, or land. Yep. China has made significant strides in developing its military aviation capabilities in recent years. The country's arsenal includes a variety of jet fighters, ranging from the domestically produced J-10 and J-11, to the more advanced J-16 and J-20 stealth fighters. Which I don't know too much about. I'd like to do videos on them, to be honest with you. These aircraft are designed to compete with their Western counterparts, such as the US F-15, F-16, and F-35. Yeah. 
While Chinese jet fighters have demonstrated impressive capabilities, they're not without limitations. Mm. What do you think would be the best way for the U.S. to respond to such a scenario? Should they take a hardline stance or seek to de-escalate the situation through diplomacy? They would have to de they would have to de-escalate and they would have to assess the situation and presumably if it's someone who's looking to defect, let them land. Because if not, then they're in trouble of getting killed themselves at that point by their own country. However, if it was just someone trying to land and not communicating, they would probably just get shot down. That's what I think that would happen. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Historical precedents and comparisons. Hmm. While the scenario of a Chinese jet fighter landing on a US aircraft is unprecedented, there have been similar incidents in the past that offer valuable lessons and insights. Okay. One such incident occurred in 1988 when a Soviet Mil Mi-8 helicopter landed aboard the USS Yorktown, a decommissioned US Navy aircraft carrier that was anchored in the Black Sea as part of a goodwill visit to the Soviet Union. Whoa. The incident, which was later revealed to be a misunderstanding, caused a brief diplomatic spat between the two superpowers. Yeah, bad. However, the situation was quickly diffused through open communication and a shared desire to avoid escalation. Just like anything, a bit of communication and everything's solved, right? <laughs> this event highlights the importance of maintaining clear and reliable channels of communication between rival militaries, even mm. in the face of provocative actions. Yeah. Another relevant comparison can be drawn from the 2001 Hainan Island incident in which a US EP-3 surveillance plane collided with a Chinese J-8 fighter jet over the South China Sea. The damaged U.S. plane made an emergency landing on China's Hainan Island, leading to a tense 11-day standoff between the two nations. 11-day? Oh my god. The incident strained U.S.-China relations and highlighted the risks of operating in close proximity to one another's military assets. Mm. The unauthorized landing of a Chinese fighter jet on a U.S. aircraft carrier would have far-reaching consequences. It would be worldwide news. It would literally be all over the place, wouldn't it? Both diplomatically and militarily. Such an action would be viewed as a serious breach of international norms yeah. and a direct challenge to U.S. sovereignty. Definitely. The diplomatic fallout could be severe with the U.S. government demanding an immediate explanation and apology from Beijing. At this point, I'd like to take a minute to invite you to join our channel as a member which will not only help us continue producing these fantastic videos about the U.S. Navy, but will also serve as a tribute to all the veterans who tune in to our videos. Again, link down below to their channel if you want to go over there and watch their videos, okay? If you want to join their membership, head over there, okay? Head on over to the link in the description or simply visit our channel page and select join. Thanks so much and let's get back to the topic. The attempted landing of a Chinese fighter jet on a U.S. aircraft carrier would not only have implications for the U.S. and China, but also for their regional allies and partners. Countries in the Asia-Pacific region, such as Japan, South Korea, Australia, and the Philippines, have deep security ties with the U.S. and rely on the U.S. military presence to maintain stability and deter potential aggression. Mm. In the event of a crisis, these allies and partners would likely be called upon to support U.S. efforts to manage the situation and prevent escalation. Thing is, how would it happen if it was the other way? If it was a U.S. plane trying to land on a Chinese fighter jet? I feel like they'd just shoot it down, wouldn't they? I don't know. Maybe if it was a defect again, maybe they'd let them because they would want to know what that technology is like. If it was like an F-20, well, it wouldn't be an F-22, would it? If it was an F-35 trying to land on a Chinese fighter jet, on a Chinese aircraft carrier, they'd probably let them. This could involve providing diplomatic backing, sharing intelligence, or even contributing military assets to a coordinated response. The willingness and the ability of these countries to stand with the U.S. would be a key factor in shaping the regional balance of power mm. and deterring further provocations. Can you imagine if China and the U.S. were actually like best friends? That'd be crazy, that, wouldn't it? It would be world dominance. Done. Easy. Not even close. At the same time, an incident like this could also put pressure on U.S. allies and partners to choose sides or clarify their positions. Mm. 
in some countries, particularly those with close economic ties to China, may be reluctant to take actions that could be seen as provocative or confrontational. This could create tensions within regional alliances and partnerships, as well as between the U.S. and its allies. The role of international law and norms. I think there's something in the international law where if someone's trying to defect, they have to let them land, I think. It's not so much land, but if someone's trying to defect, you have to let them in, wherever it is. I think there's something to do with that in international laws. The scenario of a Chinese fighter attempting to land on a U.S. carrier also raises important questions about the role of international law and norms in governing military activities and preventing conflict. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS, which Whoa, sets out I've never heard of that before. legal framework for the use of the world's oceans, provides some guidance on the rights and responsibilities of states in international waters. Mm. Under UNCLOS, warships and military aircraft have the right to freedom of navigation and overflight in international waters, subject to certain limitations. However, they are also required to operate with due regard for the rights and safety of others and to refrain from any threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. In the event of a Chinese jet fighter attempting to land on a U.S. aircraft carrier without permission, the U.S. would have a strong legal case that China had violated these principles. Interesting. So there's some sort of law there that says if you do this, then you basically get penalized in some way. That's super interesting. I wonder how that would work if it was someone trying to escape a country. ...landing of a military aircraft on another country's warship would be a clear infringement of U.S. sovereignty and a threat to the safety of the carrier's crew. Yeah. Organizations like the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, and the East Asia Summit, or EAS, provide forums for regional countries to engage in dialogue, build trust, and develop common approaches to security challenges. The U.S. and China can also engage in bilateral dialogues, such as the U.S.-China Strategic and Economic Dialogue, to discuss issues of mutual concern and explore ways to reduce the risk of misunderstanding and miscalculation. I feel like I'm learning more about um, like the procedures of emergency through this video than anything else, you know? And I know it's mostly to do with the sea, but it does make me wonder if any of this translates to land-based stuff as well. Like what happens if a plane wanted to land in a US, US base somewhere in their proximity, right? It's, it's such an idea that you just never even really think of, do you? Um, and I'm sure the US has protocols in place for this type of stuff. But yeah, I've never even really thought about it the potential for escalation and conflict. Mm. Perhaps the most significant concern raised by the scenario of a Chinese jet landing on a U.S. carrier is the potential for escalation and conflict. Technology Even being lost. I think technology being lost is the big one for me. If the initial incident is managed successfully, the lingering tensions and mistrust it creates could set the stage for future crises and confrontations. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, both the U.S. and China would likely engage in a period of intense diplomatic activity, yeah. seeking to shape the narrative and rally support for their respective positions. The U.S. would almost certainly demand an apology and assurances from China that such an incident would not be repeated, while China might try to downplay the significance of the event or even claim that the U.S. had provoked the confrontation. Mm, yeah. If these initial There'll be a lot of finger pointing, wouldn't there? Initial efforts at diplomacy fail to resolve the underlying issues, there is a risk that tensions could continue to escalate. The US might feel compelled to take additional measures to demonstrate its resolve and deter further provocations, such as increasing its military presence in the region or conducting more aggressive freedom of navigation operations. Mm. I feel like mostly it would just cause tensions to rise, wouldn't it? China would be saying, let that person come back. The U.S. would be saying, well, hold on a second. Why are they even here? China would be saying it's not that big of a deal. The U.S. would be like, no, it's a fucking massive deal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Miscalculation or overreaction by either side 
could quickly spiral out of control, drawing in other countries and destabilizing the entire region. The role of intelligence and surveillance. In the event of a Chinese fighter jet attempting to land on a U.S. carrier, the role of intelligence and surveillance would be crucial. Both the U.S. and China employ a wide range of assets, including satellites, drones, and reconnaissance aircraft, to monitor each other's military activities and gather valuable information. Prior to the incident, U.S. intelligence agencies would likely be tasked with assessing the intentions and capabilities of the Chinese military. This could involve analyzing patterns of activity, intercepting communications, and tracking the movement of key assets, such as aircraft and ships. By building a comprehensive picture of Chinese military postures and readiness, U.S. decision makers would be better equipped to anticipate and respond to potential provocations. I think the other thing that would happen as well is if it, if it did happen and there was, a U, there was a Chinese fighter jet on a U.S. aircraft carrier, the amount of Chinese ships that would be in that area would be crazy. I actually think instead of China downplaying it, I think China would be going ham. I think they would be escalate. I think they would escalate more things than the U.S. I think they would be the ones that would be like, give us that person back right now or we're going to open fire Give us the technology back. Give me that person back. Like, I think it would be pretty rough because you've seen videos of them kind of like trying to intimidate. I feel like they would do a lot of like potential intimidation tactics. Similarly, Chinese intelligence would be closely monitoring the U.S. naval operations, particularly the deployment of aircraft carriers in sensitive regions like the South China Sea. Mm. They'd be interested in gathering information on the carrier's defenses, flight operations, and overall readiness. This intelligence could be used to identify potential vulnerabilities and inform Chinese military planning. In the immediate aftermath after the incident, both sides would likely rely on their intelligence assets to gather additional information and assess the situation. This could include intercepting communications between the Chinese pilot and their command center, analyzing radar and satellite imagery, and monitoring social media and other open source platforms for any relevant chatter or insights the importance of training and readiness. The ability of the U.S. aircraft carrier crew to respond effectively to a Chinese fighter jet attempting to land on their vessel would depend in a large part on their level of training and readiness. U.S. personnel undergo rigorous instruction and participate in frequent drills and exercises to prepare for a wide range of contingencies, including unauthorized incursions and potential hostile acts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and I'm trying to think of like a, my role was anti-piracy, right? Which is the idea of someone getting onto the ship who isn't supposed to be there, right? I don't know how that would work with an aircraft landing. Like, obviously, when I was on the ship I was on, it was more about people coming over the sides, people, you know, doing some sort of um, boarding process, that we didn't want them to do. And so it was very much us looking over the edge, us keeping an eye on boats shooting at us. But if someone lands, they're like smack bang in the middle of your ship, aren't they? And so how does that look when it comes to um, securing that? Because if that, air, if that plane, if that fighter jet lands, but it's actually full of explosives, like that all of a sudden puts the ship at risk. But it also means you can't just run towards it and start pulling the pilot out. And so you'd have to form some sort of perimeter around it, wouldn't you? Guns pointed, and you'd be just yelling for them to get out, wouldn't you? And then it would be up to them to show if they are really a defect, they would probably just get out, be very emotional, and then be detained. It'd be a rough, like, detain, but they would do it. The other, the other thing then is, what happens if that aircraft carrier's got fighter jets in the air and they need to land? There's a there's an aircraft there. I don't know if anyone knows how to fly it or move it. They'd just probably tow it, I'm sure. But that's another thing as well. I feel like there's more to it than just diplomatic stuff, which I think this video is going over the most. I think the security stuff is where I'm thinking a lot. And it's getting into that here with this training and readiness. Carrier flight operations are particularly complex and demanding, requiring close coordination between air traffic controllers, flight deck crews, and pilots. 
In the event of an unauthorized landing attempt, these teams would need to work seamlessly together to assess the situation, communicate with the intruding aircraft, and take appropriate defensive measures. Regular training exercises both within the Navy and with Allied forces help to hone these skills and ensure that personnel are prepared to respond quickly and effectively in a crisis. These exercises often simulate real-world scenarios such as intercepting hostile aircraft or defending against missile attacks, allowing crews to practice their procedures and identify areas of improvement. The future and confidence building measures. So this is what they're planning to do if something like this happens. As the world becomes increasingly oh my God, look at that. polar and the balance of power shifts, the importance of maintaining open communication channels and engaging in diplomacy cannot be overstated. Yeah. The US and China, as the world's two largest economies and military powers, have a special responsibility to manage their differences and work towards common goals. You say that, but if something like this happened, I don't think I don't think they'd be sitting down trying to talk about. It. I think there'd be a lot of aggression, such as combating climate change, promoting global health, and maintaining regional stability. In the context of naval operations, this means establishing clear rules of engagement, mm. regularly exchanging information on planned activities, and developing mechanisms for de-escalating tensions in the event of a crisis. It also requires a commitment to transparency, with both sides providing advance notice of major exercises and deployments to avoid misunderstandings and unintended confrontations. Looking ahead, the US-China relationship will likely continue to be characterized by a mix of cooperation and competition. I think I think he's certainly right there. Cooperation and competition is probably the biggest thing right now. I just think that there's a lot of tension in the world right now. And China hasn't really picked sides as much as the U.S. have, especially with the Israel-Gaza and the Ukraine-Russia stuff. China haven't, or at least they haven't publicly, like, really hardcore picked sides like the U.S. has. And so that stops tensions rising. But if they did, I feel like tensions would be a lot higher right now, if I'm honest with you. And I feel like there is room for them tensions to grow at the moment, unfortunately. While the two nations may have divergent interests and values, they also share a common stake in global peace and prosperity. By focusing on areas of mutual concern and working to build trust and understanding, the US and China can chart a course towards a more stable and secure future. As we contemplate this scenario, it's essential to remember the human dimension of such events. The men and women who serve aboard US carriers and fly Chinese jet fighters are not faceless adversaries, mm. but individuals with their own hopes, true. fears, and aspirations. That's true. By striving to understand one another's perspectives and working towards common goals, we can build a future in which the risk of misunderstanding and conflict is minimized and the benefits of cooperation are maximized. You, you, you're getting too hopeful there though, aren't you? You're getting way too hopeful. Maximized. What other potential scenarios do you think could arise between the US and Chinese military. How can both nations work to prevent such incidents from occurring and what steps should be taken to manage them if they do? Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. A very thought provoking video. I think I think there'd, there'd just be too much aggression too quickly. I really do. I think the China would have ships in that area and air and aircraft all over the place swarm in the place in two seconds. I think it would just be pure intimidation to get everything back that was just lost um i think only if the u.s had i'm gonna fly oh got it i'm a ninja um i feel like um the u.s would really have to show force which if it was in the south china sea it would be much more difficult for them i think the u.s would really have to show force to prevent that that intimidation from taking hold does that make sense? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. It wasn't the video I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be an actual scenario, which to be fair, if it was a real scenario though, like I should have known this because if it really was, it would be all over the news, like everywhere. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, yeah. And until next time, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.